Good evening, everybody, or morning, if you're choosing to have a morning uh, story today. This is April 2009 issue of Match Fishing Magazine, uh, where I was covering basically what was going on. So this will be a very cold period, because it would have been February type time that you know, I'd have been thinking about it. Let's uh, read where we're up to this week. So I'm sure everyone will agree that we've all experienced one of the worst winters in many years as far as the fishing weather is concerned, which is quite interesting because I know 2010 was when we had those horrendous, horrendous frosts. Really, really cold. So interesting that I should start with that. Um, it's not been the easiest thing for me to do to write an article when uh, uh, it's been super cold like this. I even went to um, Barston and fished an international match. I say fished. Um, I even went for a practice. Went for a practice day before. Caught a roach. That was quite good, wasn't it? You know, all that way for a practice to Barston. And then I blanked. Four out of our five anglers blanked. And in fact, my entire section blanked. We drew out for money. And unbelievably, I didn't get drawn out. Simon Fry actually won it, 50 quid. Um, you know, and when you bear in mind that I'd had, well, I had two roach actually, flipping heck, I had two roach on the Friday. So I think I was looking for golf clubs at this point because you can imagine how bad it was. But fortunately, I was fishing the pairs with Joe on the Staney. We talked about that yesterday, an amazing uh, competition. Uh, we were actually winning it at the halfway stage. We went on to win it as well. But it was quite interesting here because I've mentioned about... Um, the way people's minds work in these situations, I, I, I'd managed three wins in the three uh, matches so far in terms of sections. And I think it was Frankie, actually, at the time, who's obviously one of my best mates now, um, got talking to people and was saying that I had some sort of secret ground bait mix or special ground bait mix and I wasn't telling the truth. And it was quite, it amused me because actually I was just using brown crumb um, and at the time, I used Secret and Supermatch. And basically, I mixed it up in a massive bucket at home and then bagged it to be efficient. So when I went on matches, I could just grab a bag and chuck it in. And I knew I had exactly the same quantities in every match I fished on the Staney. So I understood the ground bait. It wasn't anything to do about anything special. Joe was actually using dynamite at the time. So that goes to show we knew it didn't matter. It was just more about the ground bait having the ground bait in your mix you just had to have a high bread content in that ground bait uh, elsewhere i've been going to um lindo uh, because the winter league semi was coming up on there which i'll cover tomorrow night uh, because that's the next piece very interesting piece i fished a team of three there me joe and alan scott on what an honor to fish with those guys um there was it was quite interesting, really, because it was done on weight, so you could draw next to each other and still be, um, you know, fishing against someone who's in your team. And Joe and Alan drew uh, next to each other on the first match, and I drew bang opposite. And this was quite an interesting match, actually. Alan fished a feeder, a small feeder, uh, but I knew I was on an area where Bomb had been working really well. Now, I was always of the opinion that when you fished with a bomb, uh, it was just a bit of chuck it and chance it, foot long hook length. And it says here that I, I knew that was going to be the case. I also set up, but we'll cover that in a minute. I also set up um, a long pole rig with maggots because it had been so cold and the fishing had been so bad. And that's something to remember as well, because I always think in the proper depths of winter, on commercials maggots are the bait and i'm talking about when it's been really really cold i always think just as it's cooling down and just as it starts to warm up pellets can be brilliant but i really do think in when it's super cold that, that maggots are the one of course we didn't really do a lot of dobbing then so maybe dobbing would have been better with bread but never seem to work on bonsai on the wide bits because you haven't got any features or anything to to go at so that was interesting i suppose what that's what we were doing on the bomb really um and then i'm just talking about and this is interesting i was using an inter two around body float and then i've said i used an inter four which was a slim body float uh that made a difference and I felt it was better for sensitivity when it's calm. And these little things make a difference, apparently. Now, I'm a, I'm a big one for not having a wide selection of floats. And now that we have sort of F1 maggot 
uh, floats, the F1 pellet, and that slightly bulbous body is really stable in those light sizes and it's really sensitive. So I can just use one float now. So that's really interesting that we're there. I had a high up bulk, uh, number 11s or 12 droppers for this maggot rig and small hooks a size 20 PR32. And a PR32 is very similar, I suppose, to a GPM in its style. So a size 20 in that, I'd use an SFL now without a doubt. Um, so I used a bong with a 12 inch hook length, but Andy Sellers was next to me and he'd done a well on a couple of matches before. And he started off on a light bomb and a two foot hook length and he had six fish before I had a bite. And I changed and in the next 30 minutes I had four and Andy had four. So I changed from this sort of 20 gram bomb to a 10 gram bomb. I put a longer hook length on. You wouldn't have thought it'd make a difference. We were fishing with maggots as it happened. And I did catch um, more fish by doing it. So that's really interesting. Um, Alan was catching on a feeder, um, but I was catching on a bomb, so I stuck with it. And then I changed to a pole, and I caught, there was a lot of other fish in bonsai at the time. Small tench and roach. Then I started catching some F1s, some bigger F1s. Um, I was feeding heavy up to my feed because there was lots of roach. That was something that I used to do a lot. We talked about that with the squat fishing, so that's interesting. Um, back on the bomb and nicked a couple now and then. Then caught a couple of eye by loose feeding and picking a strung out rig up at the death and a three pound carp. So we were looking pretty good. Finished with 43 pound. Um, Andy's fish were smaller on the bomb. He had 33, but Steve Rovery won the match. Steve Rovery I haven't seen him for ages. Um, there was two other 45s, and I was actually fourth overall in the match. Alan had 34 pound, and Joe um, just couldn't catch on his peg. He was really unlucky. I remember that day. He didn't have a feature or anything to go out, and he had 20 pound. But we were still actually only a pound behind the leaders after that, and we ended up going on to win that league, which. When you're practicing for a winter league semi like that was brilliant. And I, I absolutely loved fishing with Joe. Um, you know, we used to go everywhere together. And it was, you know, this winter league semi was a great example of that. Um, I actually used a similar approach the, the following uh, week in the match. Alan came second in the match. I had £29. He had £40. Um, and that took us into the lead. And I think we stayed there. So I was really hopeful of some exciting times with the uh, Barnsley Blacks when it came to the semi-final next week uh, or in a couple of weeks' time. So we'll cover that tomorrow. But it's very interesting that, you know, I do think about these times when I was fishing on on commercials like Lindome. And I tell you what strikes me now, obviously a lot of people do it all the time and I just don't do it anymore. I, you know, I, I go, I do go commercial fishing and I've been to Lindome this winter and it's been Obviously a bomb and feeder league, but it's been really interesting. Loose feeding corn, fishing with bread. You know, I've been there every single week throughout the winter. And it's really interesting to listen to these things because maybe that's given me a few ideas. I mean, I haven't put a really long hook length on the bomb all winter. 18 inches, I've probably been the longest I've used. Maybe I should have tried something a bit longer. Maybe not. I don't really know. It's really interesting to read these pieces. Um, because it sort of fires up your brain to thinking about things that you thought about in the past. And, you know, and I, I caught a lot of fish uh, at this time. So, you know, it's an interesting thing to look at and just a reminder to yourself as well. Um, very, very interesting. I'll pick it up again uh, tomorrow so you can follow on from this because tomorrow's piece is looking absolutely brilliant. It's all about the Winter League semi-final. This was a really interesting read. Some massive things happening in the build up to this that I know got us a brilliant result. So definitely worth tuning in tomorrow. Hope you've enjoyed it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I will see you again, hopefully, tomorrow for the next episode.